Today we're going to talk about resource-based constraint delegation. Now what we're going to do is have a user connect to an app server and then eventually to the database using impersonation. In our setup we're going to have two application servers using different credentials and one database. Now before we get into this I want to explain that we do have some preliminary setup already done in terms of we have the SPNs in place, we have the group policy in place and obviously I've created four machines, uh, one for backend, two for middleware and one to run our test connections from. So running quickly into the middleware layer, what we're going to see is demonstrating the problem first of all. So we're going to do a connection to the database as the end user and that impersonation needs to flow through the middleware and eventually down to the end DB. Now what we're going to see here is that the connection at the moment is going to come back in a second telling us that anonymous logon failed or NT authority anonymous. Now the reason for this is because the credentials from our account are not flowing to the end target. Now the reason for this is that basically the delegation is not taking place. So what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate first of all that by setting up one of the delegations whether or not that works and under what circumstances. So here we're going to go ahead and we're going to effectively uh, look at the service account that is running our back end. At the moment you see the principles allowed to delegate to this account is currently empty. It's just an empty array. Um, so we're going to add values to that first of all. So what we're going to do is populate that by using the get ad user and the identity in this case is our tech bi. So that's our user account that's running one of the services. Now we're going to set that with the service principle allowed to delegate to account. And if we do the get ad service account again, you'll see that that's now been populated. And we're going to quickly go ahead and retest. Now some of you are probably already aware that this test is going to fail. Now the reason for this is because the account itself is running still and the credentials, the uh, KCD uh, uh, identifiers, the Kerberos certificates are still from the time of first login. Now you could go ahead and kill those or you could wait the 10 days for them to expire or we can go the much more simple route of waiting to restart the service. So first of all, I'm going to demonstrate what happens if we restart the backend service. Now the backend service in this case is our DB server, so simple enough, stop, start, and then retest. And some of you may or may not know that that's going to be a very simple test that's going to have a very simple result, which is nothing happened because nothing changed. Um, because in fact, the credentials to pass through, even though they're set on the service account that's running the SQL instance, they're reliant on those being set on the Power BI server accounts. So in this case, the front ends. So in order to allow the delegation, we need to actually go to the uh, Power BI servers and restart their service accounts. So I'm just going to quickly check which service account is running on which server and then go over to the appropriate one and uh, promptly restart it. So, and as you can see, I've actually logged on to the wrong box at this moment, um, but you can at least see that this is running under a computer account and NT authority. So I'll pop over to the other one and happily restart the service on the correct box. Don't worry, you know, this happens obviously. So. What we're going to do is once we've restarted it, the delegation will take place as expected. And all said and good, that should allow us to connect or impersonate from the front end to the middleware, from the middleware all the way to the back end. And effectively, the user credentials get validated by the database. So we just quickly reload the portal, check that it's up, wait for it to come up. This does take a quite a number of seconds in the case of Power BI, but, but we do only have just the one connection, so it should be relatively fast, all things considered. Uh, another important thing to note, whilst it's still loading, the data sources will continue to be greyed out. If any of you out there are wondering why, good question, don't know, it's something to do with the loading process that when it's not initialized, it's not there. And we can see finally we can connect. We can also go over to our second uh, Power BI server, which in this case is running under the 
computer object account, so the service account, and see that we cannot connect using that one. So we're able to connect with the first option, which is basically specifying the service uh, principal delegation to the tech account, which is the user account in AD objects. So what if we wanted to do it the other way around and we say, okay, we want to get the computer object. So we're now going to try and basically do the same thing, but now with uh, what is the second of our two uh, Power BI servers. So we're just going to go ahead and set the computer object, same as we did with the user object, and we're just going to check. So now we see that the principles allowed to delegate to account is now set to the computer account. Now we know that from previous experience that we'll need to restart the front end, so that's no problem at all. We go ahead and restart the Power BI server. And then we've got to go back to our browser and check that it's actually up. Uh, and then again, you know, it may take a few seconds. So we're just going to go ahead and refresh and then we'll see whether we're able to connect as that user. And again, we're still waiting for it to finish loading up fully before we can get to those wonderful grayed out tick boxes, or in this case, test now connection. Um, this is a very frustrating process, so we, please bear with me. And we can see, okay, we're good to go. So we now have the connection using the computer account. And if I go over to the other one, we can still connect with the other one as well. Uh, and this is because the credentials are still cached. So we still have all those login details. But if we see, we re, uh, go ahead and restart the first one. That's going to create that new logon, which is going to grab the credentials again. And what we're going to see is that effectively, once it loads up, yeah, see, I'm still waiting for it to load up, um, that we have now lost that ability because it was based on a set of credentials that are no longer valid. So while this is a ideal situation for potentially, you know, a security flaw, it's not a great situation from a connectivity point of view because after 10 days when the certificates expire um, well tokens expire rather uh, you're going to lose the ability to operate that account so what can we do well we can have multiple objects specified in the principles allowed to delegate to account so in theory we could just take the, the username object and the computer object and go ahead and apply them. Except for if we try that, we're actually going to get a message telling us that we cannot mix object types. What this means is we can't use a computer object and a user account in the same section. Now there is a workaround to this, obviously, and what I'm going to do is show you what that is. You have the option to use AD groups. So what we can do is we can take the two different types of account that we have, which in this case is a computer account and a user account, and we can place them into a security group. Emphasis must be a security group. The delegation group doesn't really work. So, And what this allows us to do is then put both of the objects in and then specify the group as the uh, delegate to now Keep in mind that there are some limitations here, one of which is that uh, it has to be a security group. Another one is that it has to be in the same domain. So if it's cross domains, then that becomes a different discussion and gets way more complicated. And we might cover that later. For the moment, uh, let's just go ahead and show that we've added our two accounts directly to our group. And we're now going to go ahead and then add our group to our service account uh, in order to kind of finish this off and then because again, this is going to result in us needing to refresh the AD objects, we'll need to restart both of our Power BI servers once more. But this should theoretically be the final time given that this is the um, last configuration change that we're going to make. And uh, it does help if I put the correct uh, group name in. It probably also helps if I don't do it as an AD user, but I do it as an AD service account. My bad. Uh, been a long day. So if I correctly type it in, um, what we should now get is 
it's set to the AD group. So we're going to just do a, a, again a, a quick get to prove that the allowed uh, sorry principles allowed to delegate to account are now set to the AD group. Now that AD group means that as per earlier we're going to need to restart both of our Power BI servers. But in this case it should now be the last time because what we've got here is both of them set up as part of the same group. Now if you want to add additional servers, as long as the account is added to the group before the Power BI service starts, then you would be able to simply use it immediately. And, and that's something that obviously is an advantage. So it does help if you set up the group in advance, if you're able to. Um, and the main reason I wanted to show you this is because mixing objects in some environments is the only way. Let's say as an example, historically you set them up with machine accounts and you now start using group managed service accounts and the rest. You have basically mixed delegation and but you want to set up both and the only way to really guarantee a consistent approach is to use groups.